Hey guys, and welcome back to the huddle. We are here with a KFC special endorsement. Oh my gosh. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's saying. It's saying because you need to know the shenanigans that I have to deal with on a daily basis. I'm clearly not here alone. Please introduce yourself, sir. My name is Given Illustrative. <laughs> Hello, everybody. And it's the huddle. It is the huddle. And I'm Kalita, your co host today. Um, so, we're going to have a very interesting conversation, okay? Yeah. So, I've been waiting to have this conversation. And especially because I feel like a lot of our content is female driven. Mm. Like, I just want to bring it back to the people who are watching us right now who feel like they're left out. The men. Oh, I see. I see. Um, so we're going to be talking about the Red Pill and biblical manhood. That community. That mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I thought the reason why it was so close to my heart to speak about these things is because, for the most part, like, whether we're aware of it or not, mm -hmm. social media and the media shapes our ideas of who we are yeah. and what is identity. And oftentimes it's not intentional, but it happens. Um, and I think that whether we are, whether we like it or not, the manosphere, the red pill situation has overtaken the internet. Yes. And we can't be ignorant to say that, oh, this is not having an effect on the outlook of young men and their identity and their relationship with women. Yeah. So that's really why we're just going to have a discussion about this. Um, I just wanted to start the conversation with what is the Red Bull? <laughs> like, let's start there for the person who actually doesn't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, according to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> it's all right. It made it to Urban it Dictionary. It made it. To Urban what? Dictionary. Listen. This thing started now, now. <laughs> they are there. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it says red pill has become a popular phrase among cyber culture and signifies a free thinking attitude, a waking up from normal life of sloth and ignorance. Red pills re prefer the truth no matter how gritty and painful it may be. And in terms of what we're talking about with manhood and relationship, Basically, the red pill is talking about traditional, um, traditional, what are those things? Relationships. Yes. It's talking yeah. about um, versus modern relationships. Yes, having that 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 dichotomy in our environment, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the first question that I want to have with you is like, what is your outlook on what's happening on the internet? And yeah, maybe share mm. what's happening. It's funny because literally for the past, I don't know how many days, like for the past two weeks or more, I've lit gone, been going through my shorts on YouTube and every other video is a red pill video. Mm. Like I'll go through three videos straight, red pill, red pill, red pill, red pill. Um, so I'm, I'm really being, I don't know if YouTube thinks I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to check myself because <laughs> these content... Um, houses or these platforms, they serve you what they think you would enjoy. That's true. Yeah, exactly. So I need to question myself. Uh oh. <laughs> but anyways, I say that to say uh, it, it means that I've been thinking a lot about this red pill stuff. Mm. Um, and it balances it out with creators that I think are more sound. Mm. Um, those who, you know, like are more balanced in their way of understanding how what it what is an actual traditional relationship yeah. and what it should look like. My general um perspective of the red pill community, um and literally almost everyone who's part of it, and I'm very scared. I'm very scared of how it's gonna influence men. Mm. Um my general outlook is that it's it's too far. It's swung too far to the other side. Yeah, I agree. Far too, too, too. And to the point where they disregard, you know, things that like just basic courtesy, um, ba a basic understanding of how a conversation should flow. Mm. They're very disrespectful. Very. Unnecessarily disrespectful. Um, and they speak in a way that's very belittling, mm. right? Even things that I know a lot of women agree with that they say you want to disagree with it because mm. of how they deliver it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's this 
honestly speaking, it sells a false sense of manhood. Yeah. Yeah, that being a man means you need to always just say things as they are and everybody in the room just needs to listen. Mm. And I think what's even worse is that it sells a false sense of um, the alpha male, mm. right? Because that's another thing we, we men struggle with, uh, which is not a very widely understood um, idea. Yeah, that it's very broad. Yes, yes. Like, we, we, it's not common, and it's not a common conversation that we have that, and you know what, especially amongst Christian women, I'm going to say this, Christian women are oblivious to a lot of the things we experience in the natural. I think so as well, yeah. You understand what I Definitely. mean? Exactly. So you'll find that there are a lot of men will be in the same room with you. You don't even realize that they're competing to be the alpha. It's subtle. It is very. It's very unless subtle. Unless you're watching, <laughs> unless you got your eyes open, you don't know what's happening. Exactly, exactly. So the way in which I would categorize the red pill community and what they push for, they push for the traditionalist relationships, which means... Men are the providers. Men are the protectors. Mm. Uh, men are to be respected and, and to be submitted to. Mm -hmm. Women are to be virgins when they get married. Women are to understand how the kitchen works. Yeah. Um, women are to basically know how to build a home and, and keep a home kids. running. And raise the kids, right? Uh, this is in total disregard, I've, I've noticed. It's in total disregard of how the world has shifted to a point where it has made the traditional... And this is what we need to talk about as Christians. It's our responsibility. Mm. The Bible does speak of the man being head. Yes. And the Bible does mention in the book of Timothy, um, women, where, where Paul is making the distinction between... Um, I think it's around that part where he's making the distinction between a widow and a woman that you shouldn't consider a widow, even if she's lost her husband, mm. because she's still too young, mm. right? And he mentions that women are more drawn to to gossip if they are not taking care of a family. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and in him saying that, he does mention, I'm, I'm being very specific as to which scripture I'm referring to, because mm. this is not spread out through throughout the Bible. It's not, the Bible doesn't say w women stay in the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to make sure it's... Yeah. In there. Yeah, I just want to be very clear about that. But he does mention that a woman should be at home, taking care of the home and etc. Mm. Now, the the idea of a woman being submissive, an idea of the woman being, um, you know, between respect and submission, you can have a lot of debate as to to what degree does the word mean that you should be. Mm. But it's there. It's a teaching that's there. We know that it, it it's, it's how God envisioned the relationships between husband and wife should yeah, work. Yeah. This doesn't mean that you should find some random woman in the street. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is what I wanted to get to though in saying in saying all of that. <clears throat> I think just like the red pill is happy to the red pill community is very happy to take turn a blind eye to the to the to the um, dynamics that we live under where you can be very you know, it's very nice to shout out that, oh, I I now make this much and now I attract this many women. Mm. But they turn a blind eye to the fact that it's the economies of the world can only sustain so many men mm. and, and, and give them the opportunity to be providers. Sure. That's a sad reality that I don't hear being spoken of in sure. the church as well. Because we're called to be head, mm. but it's very diff difficult to disassociate your financial standing with the idea of being a head. Sure. What does it mean to be a head? Sure. When you can't, you struggle. I mean, look at South Africa. We have north of 70% of youth unemployed. Yeah. But women are constantly saying, I don't want a man who doesn't have to have a, a job. So what's going to happen? This economy cannot sustain all of us. Being, That's true. You understand what I mean? So most of us are making money from whatever uh, little, you know, we do a little job there, we do a little job there, we mm. we try our best to make what we can make. But if you're going to define, you're going to qualify me based on the job that I have and that's what, in an economy like the one we have, yeah, you know? It's very interesting that you say that because I think that that is an issue, okay, especially in America. They have their own problems. But like, let's focus it to here as well. We have a large unemployment issue. So I think we need to, you know, be gracious in how we relate to men. 
as women, I'm going to speak as a woman, right? Um, not saying that it is not, that it is a bad thing for you to want a man who has a job and has a financial stability, I guess. Um, but I think it's also to say that women are a little bit unrealistic mm. on yeah. what financial stability is. Yes. Um, and I think oftentimes we go to the extremes because of social media and we want to go on trips every month to fancy locations um, that I think we've already just like, you've, 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 ex what is that thing? Excluded or disqualified rather? Yeah. You've disqualified a large group of men. Mm. Um, and I think also on the flip side for the men, if they want that traditional woman, um, I feel like the population of men who would be able to sustain the true traditional woman of the woman is staying at home um, with the children is very difficult to maintain in the economy without a two income household. So I think that, you know, like I understand the nature of Red Pill, but I think we also need to be practical yes. and not be jaded by these ideas because they're ideas. Yeah. The reality is that some of these things aren't really feasible in our society today, right? Um, and I love the fact that you brought the, the part of, you know, I feel like they've skewed manhood a lot because I think what is healthy for a young Christian man is to be looking at Jesus as a definition mm. of mm. biblical of what manhood is. Mm. And I think um, from the, I would say feminist side, but I'm not a feminist. So please don't, yeah, don't yeah. put me there. But from like a lot of what females are saying is that, okay, cool. You guys don't show emotion. You guys have problems here. No, 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 no. This is toxic masculinity. Men should be able to, no, 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 no. And then we've also gone too far on the yeah. other side of, I feel like, you know, the traditional masculine man has been demonized. Yes. So I think that's where I have my appreciation for the Red Pill mm -hmm. is that like men are becoming men and they're yeah. being okay with being, being men, men. Yeah. that they love to go out and get dirty. They love their cars. They love yes. to go out to the gym. They love being strong. They love to be providers. Like I really, um, I think that's a very healthy thing and is actually biblically aligned. I think it is, um, it's biblical manhood to want to be the head of the household and mm. being the head of the household is, is likened in the scriptures to be like Jesus, who's the head of the church, who gave up his life for her. He mm. provides for us. He protects us. He cleanses us. Mm. He makes us better. So he makes us, us ill. He, <laughs> <laughs> he makes us better. He, he upgrades us. Yeah. So these are, these are like things that I, I believe the Red Pill are doing right. Mm. But mm. I also think that um, the Red Pill has become a lot, it's become a little bit more toxic. Because it's funny how you say that you've got the tradition, like the, the level-headed Red Pill videos. Yeah. I never yeah. did. It's all the crazy people. <laughs> all of them on my feet. So, no, no, no. I'm not saying I've got the level-headed Red Pill people. Okay, What cool. I mean is that I get the Red Pill extremists, mm -hmm. and then I get people who are not necessarily Red Pill. Mm. So, they re they would be the ones who react to the Red Pill videos. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so these are the guys who would say, yeah, I do agree. Uh, although, and then they give their take in okay. a more balanced view okay. of it. Yeah. I like the fact that you have those people online now yeah. because I think they, they're very aggressive. And that was the problem is their version of alpha male mm. is aggression. Yeah. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why are you fighting me? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's also a lot of the reason why females are... Um, hesitant to take on these ideas and actually think of them. Mm, mm, um, mm. Tate, as a prime example, mm. the way he's presenting it, you're just like, eh. Exactly. You don't even know what to do with yourself. Yeah, you're exactly. just like, wow, this is a lot. And uh, I think Kevin Samuels also falls into, he's, he, is, he very much inspires and fuels Red Pill 
Absolutely. ideology. Absolutely. Or did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like I you know, I I I I have to say this. A lot of the points that the red pill community makes are very good points. Yeah. It's conversations that we need to start having. And you notice a lot when they're to- having conversations with women that there, there are just a lot of conversations that women have never had with themselves. I'm sure. Right? Like, some some of the things are such contradictions. Like, you want a, a husband to provide, but you want your salaries to be 50-50, to be equal. That doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. <laughs> You're fighting for uh, equal salaries, but you expect the man to work harder than you. So now we've mm. gotten to a place where everyone is working hard. Mm. Then the salaries become equal. Mm. So for me to be a financial leader in the household, now I must go in and slave myself even yeah, harder. Now <laughs> we're working right? 16 hour shifts. Exactly. 18 hour then shifts. Then you have women who want things to be balanced at home. Mm. But if things are balanced at home, how am I working harder than you in the workplace, making more money and still coming back and we're doing 50-50 dishes? Yeah, it doesn't 50, make 50. sense. It doesn't make sense. At some way, you need to be able to say, if he takes care of this, I'll take care of this. Mm. That's how human beings organize themselves. That's why companies have departments. So that you don't need to worry about what that department is doing. The home is department doing. is finished. Done. We know. <laughs> it's good. Sorted. Exactly. Minister of Home Affairs. done and these are I believe very honest conversations that women need to start having with themselves because Mm. I remember mentioning this in one of our old videos that I I made a list with we were at a a, a house party with a a friend of mine sister-in-law and I was saying to her that I can give you a list of 10 things that I can guarantee you women want in relationships Mm. you will not even get to 5 it's deep like, try right now. Make a list of things that you believe men would want in a relationship. It is deep. Don't, ne- and do not repeat things. <laughs> don't say <laughs> don't he say wants you to thing. listen. Yeah, don't say he wants you to listen to him when he comes from work. He wants you to care about his emotions. Those are the same things. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Those are the same things. Different things. Mm. I want you to get to 10 and you'll see how challenging it is. Yeah. Because women ha- know that they are the ones who are being sought after. Yeah. Right? And th- and, and I think... Oh my goodness. You know, one of the things I empathize for, this is one of the reasons that I really want to be involved at some point in my life. I want to be very involved in having conversations around manhood, right? Mm. Because there's so many things that society, you know, that's the thing, any struggle that a man goes through, mm. society considers it, it, it's only there to make you stronger. Hi, boo. I've literally been in an abusive job and in, it's, a, it's a male, the car industry. Mm. It That's Without a doubt, not a lot of women are running to get those jobs. It's a male-dominated industry, Mm. right? I promise you, we went through so much abuse there that the day that they fake-fired us, imagine being fake-fired, right? They fake-fired us and they came down, swore at us and pointed us to the door, gave us a plastic bag to put our stuff in. But when we left this guy, this I go to this guy and I'm like, dude, I'm leaving. He's like, dude, don't, man. It's it's not real. Just continue working and push. I'm like, dude, me, I'm leaving. He's like, man, just thicken up your skin. This is and I'm lighting. like, You were <laughs> gaslighted, <laughs> sir. Ha. This is how we as men are groomed to be, right? We sure. groomed to put our emotions aside toughen up and unfortunately that's what creates the man who's you you want a man who's strong who can fight who can defend but he must be soft and listen to it you, you doesn't must make you sense. must just Truth. say things that make sense <laughs> <laughs> doesn't make sense are you okay with me saying i'm afraid are you okay with me saying i'm anxious are you okay with me saying i don't know if i can make the, the, the i can pay the bill this month like are you okay with Ooh. that <laughs> these are questions <laughs> like what matters more you know, me, the, the facade that I'm, I've got everything under control or the reality that I don't, mm. that I might not always. Mm. That the idea of earning more than you freaks me out. Listen, <laughs> I, think, yo, I think that's also just the one thing that I appreciate about these conversations. It's just like the reality, like making you think. Because mm. I also think that... Females are allowed to have their list. They're allowed to have their Absolutely. things that we want and we're not going to settle. If he's not six foot, don't care. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. If you do not earn 
40,000 rand every month. Don't even look in my direction. If you are da 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 da, we are allowed to have that list. And I think the one thing that um, the Red Pull, I guess, opened my eyes to is that I, okay, so I watch a lot of podcasts, disagreement kind of Red Pull content, not okay. like those little clips. Mm. I tend to watch like two hours. Okay. And it'll okay. be females who are traditional, females who are non traditional, no, sorry, modern. Uh, it will be traditional men, modern men, and they have a conversation. Yes. And I think the one thing that I've noticed is that every single time a traditional man wants to do their thing, like this is what I want in a female, mm. the females make it feel, make the man feel like they're not allowed to have those ideas. Mm. And that what they, what, what their preferences exactly are, are evil it's 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 degrading women yeah. or it's um you're excluding women in that sense but on the other side if baby boy is not six foot you're not looking at him exactly and i feel like that's uh, an imbalance that we we don't want to acknowledge mm. and if we are acknowledging it i don't think we want to fix mm. we want that privilege but not um we don't want equality we want equality when it benefits us. That's true. But That's we don't true. want it on the other side. Yes. And everything everything has its counterweight. Mm. Like you always, if you're going to put 50 kgs, 50 k's on this side, and there's a rope, you know, on the other side, and mm. this side you're just putting a feather. Ah. <laughs> there's no balance there. Yeah. There really isn't. It's You know, it's one of the most beautiful revelations I've ever received from God is... The, the true understanding of why God put headship and love mm. in the same, under the same bracket. Come on, break it down for within, us. You understand what I mean? Like within a man, there's both headship and love. Yeah. Like love your wives. Yes. But you are also the head of the home. Mm. There is no greater responsibility than to love, guys. I don't, I don't care how you flip it over. Sure. Because when Jesus says this is love, mm. to love your, is to die for your friend. Mm. That's what love does. That's literally what Christ is saying. Yeah. Your family, the moment that there's any choo-choo around the house, it's you are baby. the first, first one going to die. Once you die, you give them enough time to run. <laughs> you make sure that you die, you stay alive long enough for these people to <laughs> for escape. For these people to escape. This is literally what a man is called to. That is mm. incredible responsibility. Mm. Now, here's here's where a God was very wise. You can't give a person responsibility without giving them an equal amount of uh, authority, mm. right? You can't tell a security guard, protect my home, but you're not allowed in my yard. Imagine. The second a criminal jumps into the yard... It's not my business. I can't get you in You understand there. what I'm... Because that's what has been done to men. Sure. That's what has been done to men. These are bars. <laughs> exactly. And and in, in regards to how... In, even though I can, I want to say this again, I agree with a lot of the stuff and the arguments that the Red Pill community is making. And as a man, it feels refreshing to watch women go, um, yeah, maybe <laughs> that is a contradiction. <laughs> and I'm like, you only realizing this now? <laughs> like, you know, sure. like just some of the ideas that women have wanting to be, you know, I, I remember having a conversation uh, at another interview we were doing. And this girl was like, as a man, I'm the one, first of all, they're like, you asked me out on the date. You invited me, so you need to pay the bill. Mm. And in the relationship, my outfit will almost always cost more than yours. And I'm like, okay, okay. Then I'll stop asking you out then. Let, let's say men just stopped. It's a disaster. Yeah, let's say we're on a strike. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah, listen, let's say, yeah, disaster. because that's another thing no one wants to understand how hard it is, mm. how hard it is. I sh this is actually what I was hinting at earlier. I'm just going to, I have to say this. Lay it out. Like, women do not understand how hard it is to matter the strength to ask a woman out. Mm. And it's especially dif difficult, and I say this because this is within the Christian community, the context in which we're having this conversation, mm. especially amongst Christian women. Yeah. Because Christian women make the assumption that God led you to me. <laughs> you know? And you're like, but I just yeah. thought you were pretty. God led you here. <laughs> <laughs> no, me, I just th thought you were pretty. Yeah, yeah, and that's a very, very, you know what? Never take 
the human out of the divine intervention. Mm. Because Moses had God speaking to him in an audible voice in a flaming bush. Mm. And Moses still had the jitters. He was like, I'm not sure, bro. Do you understand? I was like, Gideon, prove it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) If this fleece is wet. Oh my goodness. This is so big. This is so deep. This is so deep. And, And I really feel like a lot of men, first of all, need to be helped to understand that that you're not a loser for being afraid Mm. and oh my goodness this is so so deep i don't think a lot of women realize that a lot of men don't ask them out not because they don't they're not interested in them but because they just look at them and because of so many experiences they had where their feelings were torn down where they were laughed at for even trying to ask out a girl where they've been considered um, um 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 what's the word i'm looking for um, like, like you're looked at as though you're coming to cause problems just for asking out a woman. Mm. So you're in, you basically become a criminal, mm. right? So many things. Now you're so scared. You know, I don't know if you know this famous actor. Uh, what's his name? Henry Cavill, the guy who just Superman? played Superman. Yes, okay, yes, yeah. yes. You know that Henry Cavill in his kissing scenes, he does not use the tongue. He said, "Don't." On purpose. Me. He was like, "Nah, fam. Nah, I don't want a lawsuit." And and the thing is, some of the women who he says that to are offended at that. Like, mm. but it makes the scene a lot more. It's like, nah, nah, I ain't doing that. You get what you get with me. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean, it, if if you could take away the kissing scene, it's just that there are just some movies you just can't do. Yeah, you signed a contract. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? I'm sure men like him would definitely be like. Mm. It's time men understood that there's value in them. Oh, come on now. You understand what I mean? It's time. And, and that's what I appreciate from the Red Pill community, right? Mm. And I feel I just feel that we need a more balanced conversation. Where Absolutely. You, if you want to be a traditional, if they're advocating to be traditionalist men, remember that traditional men are, are, are shriv- shrivelous? Shiver- chivalrous. chivalrous. Yeah, chivalry <laughs> needs to come back <laughs> as well. So it's you true. also need to be a traditional man where you open the door for a woman. Come on. And that's, right? that's so important mm. because um, I watched a, a, a video. I don't know if you know Ruslan. You should watch mm-hmm. his content. Mm-hmm. I think you'd like it. Yeah. But he was saying something and I found it was so deep. Mm. He was saying that these people who are um, pushing this red pill narrative, Mm -hmm. especially on the extreme sides, are hypocrites because essentially they are part of the problem Mm. because they are the ones who are the rich people who are going, they say, no, we want traditional women. We want you to be a virgin when you get married. Uh, you know, take care of the children. We don't care about how, you know, how much money you're making. Na 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 na. But those are the same people who are hanging out with what they would call low value women, women. Yeah. who are you know they're racking up their body count. They are, you know, hanging around women who are not um, saving their virginity. The women that they're having conversations with. No, I agree. Not yeah. the women they're having conversations okay. with. The ones that the they're ones they're hanging around with. Pr- okay. Exactly. Okay. The I ones see. that they are actually pursuing. And I feel like that's such a, a hypocritical stance to take because you're essentially perpetuating the problem. Mm. Mm. And there was something that you said that just tied back into what this man said, which was to say that if, okay, cool, you women are acting up. What if all men just said, hunger strike, we're done. Yeah, yeah. I think that if you are going to hold yourself to traditional values, then you should hold yourself to, to traditional, traditional values. values. Yes. I think it's hypocritical to say, I want a traditional woman and not do what a traditional man was. Exactly. Because let's go, let's go exactly. there. Exactly. Did, like, if you saw courting in the previous days, it was so intentional. Exactly. It was so like it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. Courting not was just a standard. There was a level of purity mm. within mm. those settings. Mm. So you can't say that I'm a traditional man and then sleep with everything that walks. You understand? Mm. You're mm. contradicting yourself in that sense. And I think there is also that cognitive dissonance in the red pill community. Yes. For that particular Mm. Yeah, that particular place. Like they don't have 
the disposition that I mean, in 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 a traditional man, from a traditional man's point of view, did you know that men even carried handkerchiefs simply because they wanted, if ever a woman were in a position where she needed, he just he just he'll just be. There were many things that um, men carried on their persons just to make sure that if I meet with a woman, mm. I should make sure that I have an umbrella or a handkerchief on him. Mm. On, on Just to make sure that if I were to meet a woman in this situation, these are the situations that women often find themselves in. Mm. I want to make sure that I can be of assistance. Sure. Then if you want to be a traditional man, you need to start putting yourself in that, in that, mm. in that position. Like, are you willing... To walk around, this might sound wrong. Though. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> but 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 for in in a more in a lighter note, are you willing to walk around with an umbrella just in case you find a woman on a hot day and you just pop it up for her, mm -hmm. right? Or a rainy day mm -hmm. and she's carrying groceries. Mm -hmm. Like, are you willing to go back to? And it's not doing those specific things, but it's having the heart. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm watching you as a red pill man making women look so dumb mm. in a video and addressing them as being people who cannot think mm. and not trying your best to make them comfortable within the room mm. and speak to them as people that, you not know... Not being I, a safe place. Yeah, thank you. You're, you're saying that you're going to be the person who's going to protect me. Exactly. And provide for me. Mm. But the way that you're emotionally abusing me with mm -hmm. your words right now, mm -hmm. it's so contradiction. Exactly. Like, such a big contradiction. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, no, I think that this this conversation is, there's a lot to it. Definitely. I definitely. think we might have to do like a part two. Yeah, Where no, we just definitely. strictly just go into what biblical manhood is and we talk about it. Maybe we'll have a guest or something. That would be cute. That would be lovely. That would be dope. <laughs> I'm going to find someone. Yeah, we, we, we have enough cameras to do it. So. We will do it. <laughs> this is going to be the next episode. Absolutely. I think um, just the the thing that... I want all of you to understand and just take into consideration as a young man, as a person who is looking at this content, maybe trying to figure out where they fit in on the spectrum, who you are, what your identity as a man is, is to to watch these things with a caveat, to watch these Red Pill conversations with the lens and filter it out with the Bible. Um Remember that love is patient, that you are called to to love your wife, not only just have headship over her, but to love her. That means to be patient, to be kind, to not boast, to not be proud, not to be envious, but to endure all things, to always trust, to always hope, and that um, we eventually just come to a place where we love each other you know, that there's no beef between men or women, but that we actually come to a place of being respectful, being loving, and also just being balanced. So until next time, we're just going to say peace out. <laughs>